Hello, everyone. So I am sitting down in um, the Brilliant showroom, and I have something really, really fun for us today to talk about. I have some loose stones for us to look at. Um, we'll be comparing naturally mined diamonds, lab-created diamonds, and poisonites. So three very different, um, well, actually not really. We'll talk about that uh, in just a minute. Three very similar in some aspects and different in others, um, but very popular overall stones. So I have six stones on this gem tray and I'm gonna turn the camera around and kind of go through them. Um, what I really like to do in my appointments when I'm taking them with um, customers and they're right in front of me is do a blind look at the stones that I have to see if you notice any differences before you know I tell you about them. Because biases are real. Sometimes you don't know that you have a bias, but you might. So I like to do a blind look. So that's a little bit about what we're gonna be doing today and looking at today. So we have this stone right here, which is an undesignated type, but is very, bright and large. We have this one right here. This one's slightly smaller than its neighbor stones. This one right here and this one. So I'm gonna do some zooming in on them. Hopefully my phone can kind of gather what they look like. I'm gonna kind of go through all of them. They're all round brilliance. So they're all, they're all cut in a similar format. Um, what I like to do sometimes is pull the stone off of the tray and then pick it up in the tweezers so that you can really get a good glance at it. So here's number one. Let's do a nice little direct comparison to number two. So I'll start off by telling you guys that there is in fact a moissanite in these two. So, okay, I will tell you, this one is the moissanite. So if you guess number one is the moissanite, you are correct. This one is the diamond. Is it a lab diamond or is it a natural diamond? We will go over that in a minute. Okay, so I want to take a step back and look at two stones that are similar in specs. The stones that I have on the tray, I have essentially to break it down for you, two moissanites, trying to do my math correctly, three lab created diamonds and one natural diamond. So um, the natural diamond and the lab diamonds I have are super similar in one of the lab diamonds that I have is super similar in specs. Um, I generally like to be able to say like, oh, you can't tell them apart even when the specs are the same because that is true. They are optically, chemically and physically identical. So um, even when the specs are absolutely identical, you should be able to tell. Um, the ones I have are pretty close, not absolutely identical, but you still shouldn't be able to tell. But we'll see, maybe if you guys can get it um, as we look through. So one of the lab diamonds that I have that is here and similar is going to be this one. So I'm going to pick up this guy. I'll show it to you first. So this is the one stone we have. So this is either a lab or a natural. I will tell you that it is an AF color and a super ideal cut and a VS1 clarity. It is about 2.08 carats. The other one I have that is super similar is going to be this one. Bring it over here. 
This one is 1.7 carats, so it is a little bit smaller in comparison to the 2.08. It's an F color, so same color grade, super ideal cut, same cut grade, and it is internally flawless. So it is a little bit um, higher in the Clarity family. So one of these is our lab, and one of these is our natural diamond. Which one is our lab and which one is our natural? I'm really expecting myself to drop this, to be honest, because that would be, that would make me extremely nervous. Lab versus natural, take a guess. Even if it's a wild guess, honestly, that's fun. We'll get some movement around it. You should probably and not be able to say with 100% confidence whether one is lab or one is natural. Um, so just so you know, the one on the left was our Naturally mined diamond, that was the smaller one, the 1.7 F internally flawless, super ideal. And the one on the right was our lab created diamond and that was at 2.08 F BS1, super ideal. Um, now, I don't know the pricing right off my head, but I can tell you that the naturally mined diamond will be more expensive in two different elements. One, lab created diamonds tend to be about 30 to 50, sometimes up to 70% less expensive. Um, whereas, um, and the Naturally Mine Diamond also had a higher clarity grade, um, but it was smaller. So the Naturally Mine Diamond, I can say with confidence without knowing the price, will be more expensive. Um, it's just by how much, kind of depends on how the specs interact with it. So because we did have a smaller size, but a higher, um, a higher clarity grade, it can change based on that information. Wish I could name the price right off the top of my head with just knowing the specs, but I'm not that talented. So uh, I utilize the website for that type of information. If you do want to play around with the website, it's so fun. Um, I do it all the time. Even my roommates are like, Kelly, why are you playing on the website? You do this for a living. And I'm like, eh, why not? Uh, so if you want to play around to see what pricing looks like, go on our website, go to the diamond section. You can type in specs, see how price changes based on what you're entering. Um, and that'll be super fun. So these three diamonds we have, are all different specs. So they are all a different color grade. We have two cut grades and we have three clarity grades and obviously a little bit of a variety in size. If you notice this one looked a little bit warmer or maybe like almost a little bit more amber. You were right, because this is a J-color diamond. So a J-color diamond is at um, the end of the spectrum for what we carry, so it does hold a little bit of warmth. I personally really like a warm diamond. I own an I-color diamond, so that one's also um, in the warm family. And you'll notice that when you're doing a direct comparison, you notice color a lot less when it's not against a white background. So when you take this away from white to just light, then you can tell a little bit less when it's that it's holding a hue overall. So this one right here is a G color diamond. So it's gonna be a couple grades above the J, but it is below the F. So this stone is the most colorless. This was the F one we were looking at before. This is our G and this is our J. This one 
is what we call the jeweler's sweet spot. So it tends to be a really good value because you are just outside the colorless family. So you don't really pay necessarily for a colorless diamond, um, but you do get a lot of the elements of a colorless diamond since it's only just outside. And you're gonna see a lot of pretty fire in that. So for reference, we have 2.06 lab created J Super Ideal VVS2. We have one carat lab G VS2 Ideal. We have 2.08 carats F VS1 Super Ideal. And then here are my two moissanites that I have for us today. This one's eight millimeters, meaning it's approximately two carats. And this one is 7.5 millimeters, meaning it's approximately 1.5 carats. They are different grades. We carry super premium and premium moissanites. Super premiums will be most similar to this color, so colorless whereas these will probably look more similar to these, um, but it is near colorless, so technically it's in a range that encompasses both of these. So you'll notice here you should see a heck of a lot of rainbow sparkle. Look at it there. That is because moissanites are double refractive. They have twice as much fire as a diamond. We call it a disco ball effect. This one right here, you may notice a tiny bit of warmth as this is a premium moissanite as opposed to a super premium. I think that's about all the time that I have, but I'm glad you all got a lot of information out of it. Um, you can say goodbye to my diamond friends for now, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.